Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to SWF Uprising, episode number two. That's right, the latest sh and greatest show for Southern Wrestling Federation is live here in Orlando, Florida. We have got an amazing card set up for you guys tonight. And, of course, it involves all tournament matches. The main event crowning the first ever television champion that's right coming off of the two matches from the last week where we had six men in each of those matches and i said two the final two men of those two six-man matches would face on episode two of uprising for the television championship we're not waiting till the pay-per-view for that tv title matchup we're going to crown that champion tonight but first before we get to that we have got to get through six other matches we have two tag team matches we have two women's matches and we have two heavyweight championship tournament matches and as you saw on twitter one of those matches involves the newly acquired siler jordan jackson montgomery requested the trade for siler jordan and of course i politely and quickly obliged him had to remove him from Rebellion after losing the Internet Championship at Capital Combat in that uh, six-man elimination chamber. And Jackson Montgomery riding the coattails and riding the rocket that is Siler Jordan put him in a World Heavyweight Championship tournament matchup tonight against Youngblood. But all that Our said... Our first matchup of the night is four... The tag team tournament match. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty much everybody in this matchup, except Jesse Newman, has another match tonight. This, of course, as you can see there, the Fallen Kingdom. Bruiser Brad on the left. Oof. And Malcolm Black on the right. Bruiser Brad will be facing Duke Zenda later on tonight in the World Heavyweight Championship Tournament. And Malcolm Black is one of the four men in our television championship matchup. Now, the only man that's in that television title matchup that doesn't have a second match tonight is Seb Abbott. Everybody else is part of a tag team. Malcolm Black, Fallen Kingdom, James Gaines and the Sons of Carnage, and ends with the tag team. They'll be facing the cleaners tonight. Right now, Fallen Kingdom look ready to go we will see how these gentlemen do here tonight against as they come out here the sons of carnage and you can see those tables there on the outside this of course is a tables match all mat all tag team matches on uprising are tables matches that's right they are, uh, they are tornado tag table matches. Uprising, Jackson Montgomery decided to do something a little different. And while it's, it's quite different actually. Ooh, ooh, uh. These guys are ready to go. Sons of Carnage, Jesse Newman on the right. Uh, excuse me, I did that last time. Jesse Newman in all black, James Gaines in the black trunks let's get this match underway ladies and gentlemen our first matchup here of the night and these gentlemen are ready to go the bell rings Jesse Newman goes right after Brad Malcolm Black goes right after James and this is gonna be a wild and crazy look at look at Malcolm Black flipping James Gaines over and oh nice reversal from Newman and he, oh, oh, doesn't get him quite high off the ground, but still lands the move on Bruiser Brad there in the right corner. Into a neck breaker. Nice hurricane runner from Malcolm Black on James. And a snap German from Jesse Newman. Look at Malcolm Black. He's got, no. Gaines gets out of it. And my friend, there are no pins in this matchup. Only broken tables. That's right. Malcolm Black and James on the outside, and Malcolm goes face first into that turnbuckle. 
Bruiser Brad across the ring. And a huge clothesline to Jesse Newman. Wow. Oh, big kick there. Bra uh, Malcolm gets tossed back into the ring. James grabs that table. We might see some action here. This could be a quick, well, with Jesse Newman on the outside. James Gaines could be in a bit of trouble here. And a knees right to the stomach of James. Malcolm's going to get that table. And is he going to set it up in the corner or just set it up in general? Nope, he doesn't get the chance to. Nice neck breaker there. Face first goes James Gaines into the corner from Bruiser Brad. And oh my goodness. 500 pounds of Bruiser Brad right on the chest. Malcolm Black takes the table away. And oh. And Newman sees what's going on there with, with Brad. Oh, super kick. Oh my goodness. Nice tag team move there from the Sons of Carnage. And it looks like James might be trying to set that table up and he kind of interrupts his tag team partner there with the DDT. Malcolm Black now taking it to Jesse. Look at this and a snap sloop. Oh, I can't speak. Snap suplex. And now Malcolm Black in the predicament of two on one. Jesse Newman slowly getting to his feet. Gaines allowing that to happen. Hooks him up and a neck breaker there. Wow. Newman with the table. Up and a nice reversal from Malcolm Black. But Jesse Newman hits him with the table and stops all that nonsense. Table up against Malcolm Black now. Look at this. Oh, James Gaines gets hung up. And Newman just flat out choking Malcolm Black in the corner there. Brad bringing the table back in. This match is just pure chaos right now. Neck breaker to Brad. And look, here goes Newman. He is calling Malcolm Black to his feet. And a front drop kick. I can't really tell if he landed it. James Gaines swung that table at about the same time and kind of cleared the ring there. Again, hooking up Brad. He doesn't get too high off the ground, but the effect is still there. Black now with the table, and Brad's going to roll out in a shot to the lower back. Up. Oh! Vertical suplex almost and straight into a knee. And here comes... James gains in a knee right to the side of the head. And now, look at this. Jesse Newman's got Malcolm Black up and he stops. And DDT. Malcolm Black just got all the punishment there. Gaines flips over the much larger Bruiser Brad in a hammerlock DDT from Gaines. Wow. Oh! Malcolm Black kicks that table. It goes right into the face and chest. Sit out. Jawbreaker there from Black. Oh, Black and New and Gaines going back and forth now. And now a tag team move of their own double choke slam from the Fallen Kingdom. The table is getting set up. Malcolm Black bringing in another one. It gets slung across the ring, though. Oh. Malcolm Black with James Gaines, and he is going to put him up against that table. No. Oh, a face first. Onto that table he goes. Oh. He lands straight on it there. His Gaines partner wisely picks the table up, and a neck breaker from Gaines. Brad with the reversal. And now Brad is in there all alone with these two men. And just as I say that, face first goes Black. It looked like Black was trying to leave the ring. Oh, boy. Is he going to get it? A second sliding knee to the face and the side of the head of Malcolm Black. Now, Jesse Newman set that table up 
in their last tag team matchup against the Tijuana family, Alex and Marco Corzo. And that's how that match ended. And I got a feeling it's gonna end right here, face first. Goes Malcolm Black, and ladies and gentlemen, just like that, the Sons of Carnage move on to the finals, if I'm not mistaken, of this tag team tournament for Uprising. We can take a look at a sliding knee there, the DDT there. I think they're moving on. I might. I thought that might have been it right there, or power bomb could have ended that. But oh yes, I am. That is correct. The Sons of Carnage move on to the finals. We will see that matchup at the next pay-per-view. The thin red line. These guys are going to face the winners of the next tag team matchup tonight between the Cleaners and the tag team. Our next matchup of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, is between two women who had individual matches on this past episode of Showdown, which, by the way, was commentated by our very own Vice. If you didn't get a chance to watch it, I suggest go back, check it out. It is a great, great show. We had four matches on that show. Vice did a great job. He will be back doing commentary for Showdown. But back to this matchup. This first competitor, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, it is Nina Letter. She faced off against Princess, I want to say, and she was able to pick up the victory there. Her opponent for this women's championship tournament match is going to be Danielle Jane. I'm yes, Nina Letter faced Princess Danielle Jane faced Pasadena. So we have Nina Letter taking on Daniel Jane here tonight. Both of these women won their matchups. So they have a lot of momentum coming in. But who's going to get the victory? Who knows? Vice was uh, pretty taken by Danielle Jane. Um, also Princess, I think, I think. So we might have to see what's going on there. And here comes Danielle Jane with a flip right out of the gate. And ladies and gentlemen, she is fired up and ready to go. These two ladies have huge implications in their matchup here. Whoever wins will go on to face the winner of our other uh, women's matchup tonight. It is going to be Ashley versus Quinn. So, the I'm, I'm sorry. We had a couple of first round buys in our ladies matchup. So if uh, Danielle, Jane, or Nina Letter, the winner will face Keisha in the next round. And later on, we have Ashley versus Quinn, the winner of that matchup facing Rebecca Evans of the Fallen Kingdom. So as Danielle Jane finishes her interest here, she is cranked up and the fellas in the first row are fired up and ready to go. Look at the, look at the muscles, girl, show it off, showing it off. Oh, and the sass, my goodness, the sass. These fans are ready, here we go, everyone is taking their seats. Nina Letter is ready, Daniel Jane focused. Let's go, the ref rings the bell, and they lock up center of the ring, and Daniel is gonna get the initial one up with that hammer lock, and she is twisting that arm, and Nina Letter, a nice reversal there. She's gonna crank the arm and take Danielle right down to the mat. Nice move there from Nina Letter. If you not, if you don't remember, Nina Letter um, had a match or two before the Blonde Beauty Club came in and attacked her. And oh, Danielle with a Russian leg sweep there. Um, the Blonde Beauty Club attacked Nina Letter and kind of put her on the shelf for a couple of weeks. But she is back, folks. She is ready to take Uprising by Storm. Oh my goodness. Nice jumping arm breaker there from Danielle. So the ideal way that this uh, tournament would go for Nina Letter, she would win this matchup. She would win against Keisha. Oh, nice sweep of the leg. Ashley would win against Quinn. 
and defeat Rebecca Evans. And then these two ladies, Nina Letter, Ashley would face off in the semifinals. But is that going to work out the way Nina wants it to? We'll have to see. It all hangs on this matchup right here. As she pulls Danielle up to her one knee and off the second rope, and bam! Nice hurricane run of face plant. One of, one of my personal favorite moves there. Nina up on the second rope. And Danielle Jane climbing to her feet. Oof! Jumping DDT, my goodness. And Danielle has to roll out. And oh my gosh, Nina let her blast Danielle out to the outside. Now, with uh, Danielle's win on Showdown, she has two losses, one against Rebe Rebecca Evans, excuse me, and one in a fatal six-way. Nice move there by Jane. Nina Letter um, is 2-0. She did um, defeat, oh, excuse me. Nina Letter is 2-1. She uh, defeated Jade Corzo on the pay-per-view. She won a three-way matchup on Rebellion. And she lost a uh, tag team matchup against the Blonde Beauty Club and Jade Corzo. Those, uh, those two groups of women there, Jade and Nina Letter and the Blonde Beauty Club, they're all kind of intertwined together. Jade Corzo, of course, on Rebellion. Heading towards, she's going to try to get that women's championship there. Nina Letter goes for the pin and just a one count. Da oh, Danielle was on her way to get up, and Nina kicked her right in the back of the head. And now look at Nina. Oh, my goodness. Look at Nina Letter. Just the fury and just slamming elbows right into Danielle's beautiful face. My goodness. Will she be the same after this? Who knows? Nina got her up. No, Danielle's going to reverse it. DDT. Nice move there. Little shades of uh, Sting. That reverse DDT. Fisherman suplex and the pin. No. Nina's going to let it go. And looks directly into the camera. Nina let her now up on the top rope. Is she going to be able to hit the Eclipse here? Oh, and she does center of the ring. Danielle bounces out to the corner. And look at that. She is proud of that move. I, I don't blame her. That was a fantastic move. And she's got her... Oh, dragging her out to the center of the ring. Look at this. What is she doing? Oh, my goodness. Nina Letter is slinging Danielle Jane all around the ring here and just dumps her hard onto the mat. She's going to go for the pin. Is that going to do it here for Danielle? And it... No! My goodness! After an eclipse and after the airplane spin, Nina Letter is unable to put Danielle Jane away. Tries to go for the leg kick. Or, excuse me, the leg drop. And she... Danielle Jane was able to dodge it, and oh, a little too long contemplating what she should do there. Big clothesline, though, by Danielle. And now she goes for a pin, and before the ref can even get a hand down, she kicks out. Danielle Jane now has Nina let her up. She's going to send her across the ring into the corner. And oh. Oh, and a shot to the face. And around the turnbuckle she goes. Nice move there by Danielle Jane. She's going to hop back in. Who knows what is going to happen now between these two ladies. Danielle Jane picking Nina Letter up. No. Goes for the... Oh, my God. What a kick right to the back of the head there. Good Lord. Nina really blasted Danielle with that kick. And, nope, Danielle open over in a reverse DDT there. And here we go. What is Danielle doing? Elbow drop 
right across the chest of Nina Letter. And now Danielle goes for the pin. One, two, and that is gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. I thought Nina Letter might have had that move, or excuse me, had that match up there. Right after this, look at this, pow. And then picks her up and slings her all over the ring. My goodness, I thought Nina Letter would have had that matchup. But in the end, look at this big reversal clothesline from Danielle. And this right here might have done it. Might have disoriented Nina Letter just long enough. And a springboard elbow drop gets Danielle Jane the victory. My gosh. Wait, what a way to pull it out for Miss Jane here. She is moving on, ladies and gentlemen. She is moving on to the next round to face Keisha. Looks like Nina Letter is going to have to wait to get her revenge at a later date. Here we go, folks. Moving right along here is our first matchup for the SWF Uprising Heavyweight Championship Tournament for this episode of Uprising. Now, we've already had Jay Wolf and Tyler Adams. Jay Wolf defeated Tyler Adams to move on to the semifinals. Havoc and Vice, where Havoc won that matchup there. So tonight we have Bruiser Brad at Duke Zenda, Youngblood, and Siler Jordan. Now, Bruiser Brad and Jay Wolf, it was just happenstance that these guys got drafted to Uprising. They have the history. They have a previous history moving on or, or moving back all the way to Capital, or excuse me, to Crowning Achievement, um, even at Capital Combat. So Crowning Achievement, they had their Battle of the Big Men. Um, they opened up that card. They just went to town at each other, turned in into a rivalry and these two men were at each other's throat for a month and then at capital combat it took uh after some sneak attacks from bruiser brad and leaving jay wolf out on the uh, ramp with a count out victory jay wolf coming down the ramp face to face he's not hiding he went right after bruiser brad but in the end at capital combat bruiser brad did get the victory there over Jay Wolf. So, what if Bruiser Brad and Jay Wolf face off in the semifinals? What is gonna happen there? But first, Bruiser Brad has gotta get past this man. Ladies and gentlemen, by far, along with Vice and Wayne Level, the longest tenured person with SWF or PWO or whatever you want to call it. He is the money maker. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Duke Zenda. And coming down to the ring with him in the background there, you see his uh, significant other, we'll call her, Diane Zenda. And Duke is fired up, ladies and gentlemen. He has got quite the opportunity here, but he has got a mountain to climb. And here come those one million dollar Duke Zenda bills. His face is there right in the center of this million dollar bill. I'm gonna tuck a few of these in my pocket. You never know, you don't know what people will accept at Walmart. Moving on, in the center of the ring and Duke's gonna take it right to Brad, but Brad blasts him with a knee and a choking STO to Duke Zenda. Now, he may not have quite the opportunity here against Bruiser Brad. I mean, Brad is just a mountain of a man here. Oh, Brad slings Duke off after being distracted. He's gonna throw him like a sack of potatoes here. After being distracted and already, are we gonna see it? Oh my gosh, Bruiser Brad drops him, bonsai drop. And Diane jumps up on the ring apron as Brad goes for the pin and distracts the ref. Look at Brad here. He has got him 
hooked in. Oh, the referee has just thrown Diane Zenda out of this matchup. She is gone to the back. That was quick, quite fast. Duke now out here on his own against this monster of a man and a shoulder block. My goodness. What are we going to see here out of Duke? Is he going to be able to work his way out of this hole? That's exactly what it looks like. Look at Brad. He is gearing up. Big discus punch, and he has just flattened Duke Zenda. One, two. Wow. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Bruiser Brad is a force to be reckoned with. And as Danielle stands out there on the outside and watches the bonsai drop on Duke. Oof. And you see her turn her face. But look here. He goes for the pin. And Diane jumps up on the apron and prevents Duke from losing that matchup. But pow. Big discus punch there from Bruiser Brad, and that's all she wrote. The money maker has been eliminated. And you know what, folks? That means that Bruiser Brad and Jay Wolf are gonna face off one more time in the semifinals for this Uprising Heavyweight Championship match or championship. I'm excited to see what's in store for these two guys and who is going to come out on top and head to this head to the finals Well folks, what a matchup against Bruiser Brad and Duke Zenda. That was just insanity. But moving along in our Uprising Tag Team Tournament, the winner of this matchup will be in the finals against Sons of Carnage. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Brian the Brain on the right, ends on the left. They are the tag team here in SWF. And as I mentioned earlier, ends is gonna be involved in that fatal four-way matchup along with James Gaines, who just won his matchup against the Fallen Kingdom. Look at these two gentlemen. If I'm not mistaken, this might be the first time we've seen these guys as a tag team. We will ha I believe that is true. In the last episode, uh, they were in their separate six-man matches where Enns was able to be one of the two men remaining as Seb Abbott ended up getting that victory. Here we go, Enns and Brian the Brain Stand in the ring, patiently waiting for their opponents. And again, it, it is a tornado tag tables matchup for these tag team matches here. And here they come, ladies and gentlemen, the cleaners. Wayne Level on your left, your showdown commentator, Vice on the right. These guys have come to play and they have come to win. That's right. The winner, as I said, will go on to the Thin Red Line pay-per-view and face off against Sons of Carnage to crown an SWF Uprising Tag Team Champion. Wayne Level and Vice. These guys have been around for quite some time. As Vice said on Showdown, I asked him to come on back. I asked these guys to come on back home. SWF, they wanted to further the legacy of SWF. They quickly obliged. And look at ends. He jumps out immediately and leaves his opponent. I'm sorry, leaves his partner in there. But now level on the outside, and oof, what a move by Vice. Level's gonna bring the table in, and this thing might be over before it gets started here. Level with a big shot to ends, good lord. Oh man, he is gonna send ends on the outside. And Wayne jumps clear over the top rope, lands hard on ends. Brian getting, well, commentator's curse. Brian reverses his move on Vice and ends on the outside. Drops on the 
on the leg. Brian just bashing the face of Vice. Big elbow drop from the middle rope and into the barricade goes Vice, or excuse me, goes level. Elbow to his face now, ends at a nice jumping clothesline. My gosh, oh! Thez press from Vice. Look at level, he's got, ends his arm out there. And he is just cranked away on that arm. What are we gonna see here in a shot to the stomach? Vice goes into the table now. And another shot, Brain goes into the table. These guys going back and forth here. Big chop and a die and a I can't even get the words out. Springboard clothesline there from level and a knee to the face of Brain, turning him completely around. Swinging neck breaker there from ends. Oh, and a nice springboard leg drop from Vice. Ends is the anti aerialist. No flips, no flippy stuff from ends, you won't see any of that. Vice in there all alone now. Oh, what a move that was. Looked like he was setting him up for a reverse DDT, but drops the leg across the chest instead. Brain goes to taunt, and Vice catches him, or excuse me, Wayne Level catches him. Into the table he goes now, and a big chop across the chest as ends. Brings in the second table, my goodness. And Brian the Brain is cranked up. Ends is gonna send Vice into that table. And a big chop across the chest. Oh! Table shot there from Brain. And now Vice is on the outside. And that might not bode well for Wayne Level. As Ends brings him up to one leg. And Brain's gonna hit him with the table. He's just inflicting punishment now. Into the table goes v Wayne Level. Kick to the stomach. Sending ends into the table now. And chop right across the chest. Brain Vice in that table now. These guys just trading these big chops. Oh! The anti-aerialist moves out of the way as Wayne Level goes for a swanton and misses. Level rolls out and now Vice all alone with the tag team and two tables. My goodness, this this could be terrible, but Brain accidentally hits his tag team partner. Vice dodges it, and now these guys are one-on-one -on -one here in the ring. And a reversal from Vice into a suplex. Very nice move there from Vice. Level back in the ring. Oh, he's gonna pick Brain up. Look at this. Blue Thunder Bomb from Vice. He calls that the Royal Palm. And a super kick from Wayne Level. And these guys are going at it. Uh-oh. Ends has got Vice up. He's going to send Vice into the corner. Is this going to be it? Up he goes. And a huge power bomb from Ends puts Vice through the table. And ladies and gentlemen, just like that, the tag team are your winners. And they are moving on to face Sons of Carnage at the pay-per-view and just a lot of action in that replay shot there. As these guys over and over delivering chop after chop. Look at this. And look at the face of Vice just grimace and just see the pain. And a little far away view of another chop as Brian pops Vice right on the head. Guys in the truck, there was plenty more action going on than chops in the corner. He didn't even show us the finish. I'm gonna have to have a talk with the guys in the truck. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian the Brain ends the tag team going to the pay-per-view to face Sons of Carnage to crown the first ever Uprising Tag Team Champions. Well, folks, as we get closer to that 
main event fatal four-way television matchup television championship matchup we have another uprising phoenix matchup that is our women's division and coming down to the ring introducing first it is the leader nope i am mistaken the leader is angelina lane it is a member of the blonde beauty club ashley now angelina lane was moved on to the first or excuse me to the second round as a first round bye she is facing Aaliyah Marie in round two. Brittany ended up facing against Haley Nichols in episode one and just put a beating on Miss Nichols. She moved on. She's going to be facing Faria Fury. Now, there is a strong possibility that, assuming Angelina Lane wins her match, and look at Quinn coming out of the gate with a big flip. The pyro, she is ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Assuming Angelina Lane beats Leah Marie, Brittany beats, beats Faria Fury, those two women, blonde beauty club members, could face off in the semifinal. And depending on if Ashley wins here tonight, wins against Rebecca Evans, wins against the winner of Daniel Jane and Keisha, all these things have to fall in line for blonde beauty club members to face off against each other in the finals. That would be quite something to see. If in the semifinals there was all three members, that would be that would be something. Quinn, ladies and gentlemen, fired up and she is ready to show she deserves that uprising championship around her waist. But as I said, she has got to get through Ashley first. And these fans all taking their seats. Ashley ready to go. Quinn gets to her feet and there we go. We just get some class here from these ladies. Ref gets ready to ring the bell. And he does and this thing is underway here. Center of the ring, good Lord. Quinn went for a move and Ashley promptly flapjacked her. Right face first into the mat nice reversal kind of caught Quinn off guard it looked like oh what a move there just spinning neck breaker and up to one knee now is Brittany or excuse me Ashley Good grief. I can't get these all these names right Quinn going up to the second rope now and she is getting some feedback from the crowd Ashley up to her Feet and oh, Ashley tried to get out of the way but ends up catching double boots right to the face. She rolls out of the ring, quickly gets back in and catches Quinn. Look at this, up and over, oof. My goodness, that pump handle driver is what that looked like to me. And a big German suplex there from Ashley. Now these, these members of the Blonde Beauty Club are brutal. They don't take any crap from anybody. Pretty dominant group of women here in SWF as well as their home in GPW. Grand Prix Wrestling. Oh, Brittany's, am I saying it right? Nope, Ashley goes for the pin. Quinn is able to kick out. Oh, elbow right to the forehead of Ashley. Oh, and she eats a jawbreaker. Good Lord, center of the ring too. Arm drag, reversal there. Back and forth these ladies go and she's gonna push Quinn away and catches a punch right to the face. Look at this. Look at this. Off the top rope into a power bomb. What a move by Ashley. All the back and forth and Ashley comes out on top and she is getting these fans riled up, that's for sure. She has got Quinn up. Oh, a slap to the face. Pump handle. Oh, face buster there from Ashley. She goes down for the pin. Two, no. Wow. What a move that was by Ashley. And oh, good Lord. Here we go. What are we going to see here? The flip pile driver from Ashley. That might be it for Quinn. She gets down for the pin and hooks the leg. One, two, no. 
No, Quinn is gonna kick out of the flip pile driver. That is a that is a hard, hard move to pull off, and even harder move on the top of your head if it if it lands. Going up, did you see the height she got from that elbow drop? But Quinn moves out of the way, but quickly eats a snap German from Ashley, who again trying to get approval from the crowd to get her fired up. She's gonna kick Quinn down to the mat. Uh-oh. Oof! Dropping the knee right across the bicep of Quinn. And now just laying the boots right across the chest of Quinn. Ashley, as I said, these ladies, they can fight and they are mean. Up in the fireman's carry position here, what is she doing? Hangs her over the top rope. Good Lord. Uh-oh. Ashley grabbing the hair of Quinn and just delivers some massive headbutts. Good grief. She is, she is bringing the pain right now in a one count. As Quinn kicks out. Not going to give up that easily. She absorbs that kick right to the stomach. Oh my goodness, what a move that was from Quinn as she goes for the pin. No and a two count, holy cow. What a corkscrew neck breaker that was. Really out of nowhere, that thing just popped up and laid Ashley out. She is still out. Ref might wanna make sure she's conscious. Holy cow, over the top. Goes Ashley and oh, Ashley blocks it and delivers a crossbody, springboard crossbody from the apron. And she's gonna pick up Quinn and big shot to the face. Oh, and here we go. Another pump handle face buster that bit her in there and quickly goes for the pin. And no, Quinn kicks out at two and a half. And Ashley can't believe it. She is ready to end this matchup. And it looks like we're gonna see it a second time. That flipping pile driver head bouncing off the ropes. That might be a rope break as Quinn is under the rope. The ref didn't see it. And Ashley defeats Quinn and moves on to the second round. That, uh, there might be some things happening there. To me, that looked like Quinn was under the bottom rope. Look at this, just, oh my gosh. And we see it again, oh man. But she kicked out of that one, she wasn't having it, and this is how it ends. Flip pile driver, head bouncing off the bottom turnbuckle, and that is it for Quinn. I think she was under the rope, the ref didn't see it. And unfortunately, Quinn gets the short end of the stick and Ashley moves on. She's gonna face Rebecca Evans in the second round of our Women's Championship Tournament. Well, folks, I'm having to call a match for something that uh, I didn't think would ever happen. I thought uh, this would have been a punishment, but in turn, it turns out to be a blessing for this man. As I have sent him out from rebellion at the request of Jackson Montgomery, he wanted Siler Jordan. He got Siler Jordan. And ladies and gentlemen, the natural born thriller is in a World Heavyweight Championship matchup against Youngblood. Uh, tournament matchup, I should say. Now, I saw him in the backstage area while trying to avoid him. He did have those ribs taped up, uh, but it looks like he has uh, since removed those bandages. Maybe an attack, maybe it's a tactical thing. Maybe he doesn't want to want Youngblood to notice the uh, taped up body. You know, when you tape those ribs or you tape an arm or you, you 
You know, you do anything like that, you essentially paint a target on yourself in that area. So maybe Siler Jordan is doing it as a tactical attack, trying to get an advantage here. And boy, is he burning through the SWF budget with these pyro. The natural born thriller, ladies and gentlemen, here on Uprising, your former internet champion. Defeated at Capital Combat, but he is here and ready to go in the new gear. Uprising there on the belt. I gotta get that, it's pretty nice. Also had the uh, logo there on his belt buckle and jacket. So he is a uh, full, full on uprising. We'll give him that. He is a company man through and through. But ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, as I mentioned, he is facing Youngblood. And we saw Youngblood on Showdown, commentated by Vice. Again, if you haven't seen that mat or that uh, show, go back and check it out. Youngblood took on Crane. Crane unable to get the victory. Youngblood got the one, two, three in that matchup. Vice was so impressed with him. He requested a matchup against Youngblood here tonight. But um, we had some tournament matches to get through and we're unable to fulfill that request. So it is Vice versus Siler Jordan here tonight. Vice, of course, in Wayne level earlier in the night, defeated by the tag, the tag team, Brian the Brain and Enns. But all that aside, this is a World Heavyweight Championship Tournament matchup. The winner of this matchup is going to go on to face Havoc in the semifinals. And then, and then the winner has to face either J-Wolf or Bruiser Bread. Whoever wins this matchup, I don't think is a winner. They're going to have to go on and face the two biggest men in SWF, Bruiser Brad, 500 pounds. Jay Wolf, seven foot two, like 385. I mean, these guys are are are, are cruiser weights compared to those guys. We're getting ahead of ourselves, though. Siler Jordan, Nakaki as ever, saying, "Bring it on." The stoic. Okay. Okay. Siler Jordan may not be a complete jerk. Whoa. This matchup begins, and Siler Jordan with a snap dragon suplex. And he's going to start this thing off fast, and in a hurry, a jumping complete shot. Good grief. Well, as much as I uh, don't care for Siler Jordan, I will say this. Nice move by Youngblood, though. I will say this. The man can fight, and the man can talk, and he sure does back up everything that he says on that mic with he backs it all up in the ring oh my goodness Youngblood just raking the forearm against the forehead of of Siler Jordan now up until Capital Combat in that Elimination Chamber matchup Siler Jordan was undefeated he was oh nice bicycle knee right to the jaw of the former internet champion Vice was undefeated. Um, excuse me. Vice. Siler Jordan was undefeated. Youngblood, on the other hand. Oof! What a powerbomb from Siler Jordan. Youngblood, on the other hand, is 2-2. Two and two. Funnily enough, look at the cutter from Siler Jordan. And Dot going for the pin. He is fired up, and the fans here at Uprising... Seem to actually enjoy Siler Jordan. Look at this. Up and, oh man, what a move there from Jordan. Youngblood has got some work to do as a second cutter. And now Siler Jordan getting ready here. Oh, that big thrilling knee. And then quickly goes for the pin. Two, and no, Youngblood is going to kick out at two after that knee. Wow. Just a massive knee. A third cutter, Siler Jordan laying it heavy on these cutters here. And now, look at this. He's got him in a dragon 
soup, or I almost said suplex, a dragon sleeper here. Youngblood trying to fight through it. The ref asking him if he's going to tap it. He doesn't. And Siler Jordan is, is, has to let go. Ref says get down and he obliges with a nice leg drop from the top ropes. It is, this matchup is all Siler Jordan here. Whoa. And as I'm saying that, big reversal from Youngblood. Squirms out of that move and delivers a huge clothesline. Pele kick by Youngblood. And he's going to quickly pick up Siler Jordan. Kick to the stomach now. Got him up. And a brain buster. That could be it for the former internet champion. Does Siler Jordan kick out? He does. Right as the hand hits two. Wow. What a move there by Youngblood. A huge brain buster. And now look, he is going to deliver a submission of his own. Siler Jordan quickly getting out of it. Youngblood's going to send Jordan over into the turnbuckle here. DDT reversal. Good grief. He drops Youngblood right on his face and another cutter there. He is laying on the cutters heavy here tonight. Nice clothesline there from Youngblood taking both men off their feet. And a shoulder block from Jordan. He's going to get Youngblood up now and a we're going to have to ban the damn cutter. He has laid on this cutter so thick tonight. He must he must be feeling something. He must be feeling a little uneasy here against Youngblood. He's going to take him over to the ropes. No. And Youngblood's able to get out of it at the last second. Oof. Shot to the stomach, and a reversal. DDT right across the head of Youngblood, and we're about to see that knee again, I think. Oof, and this time he, or he lands at flush and goes for the pin. That's the second knee. One, two, and just like that, ladies and gentlemen, it seems a new winning streak has begun. After losing the internet championship, look at this cutter. Who knows how, which one that was? The man hit so many cutters, we lost count. I want to say it was five. The Pele kick and the brain buster almost put Siler Jordan away. And you can see Youngblood put a, just all of his strength into that thing. Number 112? I don't know. Siler Jordan is your winner, ladies and gentlemen, as Youngblood rolls to the outside. And just like that, as I said, another, another streak looks to be in the works. But Siler Jordan still has to face Havoc in the next round. We'll see who gets the victory there in episode number three. Here we go, folks, our main event of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to crown the first ever SWF Uprising Television Champion. Making his way to the ring. The only man on the card tonight that has not been involved in another matchup. Probably the freshest man of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Seb Abbott. This Australian crazy person making his way down to the ring. Seb Abbott won that fatal, or excuse me, won his six man matchup on the previous episode. Granting his way into this matchup. He uh, faced off against Inns, I believe. Or maybe it was Malcolm Black. I don't know. Malcolm Black won his matchup. So maybe it was uh, it was either Enns or James Gaines. I can't remember off the top of my head. Oof. This just... Man, this guy is a crazy person. Covered in tattoos. The beard and all. Gives me... 
Like, I, like if I see him on the street, I'm definitely crossing. I'm definitely crossing to the other side, that's for sure. Look at this monster. He's ready, though. He debuted on the last episode, and he could quite possibly win a championship in his very second matchup. Introducing first of his opponents. It is one half of the Sons of Carnage. It is James Gaines the third, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we already saw James Gaines previously in the night, taking on the Fallen Kingdom, Bruiser Brad, and Malcolm Black, who is also in this matchup. They won their match against the Fallen Kingdom. So, and it was a tables match. Now, James didn't go through a table or anything. Um, Jesse Newman actually put Malcolm Black, I think, through the table. So that could be that could be something we watch out for for Malcolm Black. But James Gaines did have a matchup earlier tonight, so we'll have to see how he is, how if he's fatigued in any way, if he's tired in any way, if it's going to affect him at all. Seb Abbott, like I said, just uh, sitting in the back with his feet up, I'm sure, not getting ready for anything. Um, surrounding himself with ladies of the night. He has been known to do such things. Um, so far to as to be in the <laughs> be in the arena and not even know he's got a match until it was time. And even then, I've seen the man come out and win. So, Seb Abbott is by far the most rested. James Gaines in his matchup against the Fallen Kingdom. And here is Malcolm Black. They look to have uh, cleaned him up a little bit. He was busted open in that previous matchup. They've done a good job of, of getting him clean and, and putting the glue. They didn't stitch him up, so it wasn't that bad, but they did, did secure the cut to where he wouldn't bleed on his way down to the ring. But Malcolm Black and Bruiser Brad facing off against James Gaines and Jesse Newman, Sons of Carnage. And as I said, the Sons of Carnage come out of that matchup victorious after Jesse Newman put Malcolm Black through the table. Now, Jesse Newman seems to be their, their table guy. He put Marco Corzo through the table in the first round of the tag team tournament. Then followed it up with Malcolm Black. The last man entering this matchup faced off against Vice and Wayne Level as part of the tag team. The anti-aerialist ends. Brian the Brain, his tag team partner, was in the other six-man matchup and was unable to come out of that matchup as one of the final two. So we have three guys who have already had a match here tonight. And as I said, they all stand on the outside as, as ends patiently waiting to get him into the ring here. He is fired up and the guys disperse around the ring. There's Malcolm Black. Ends heads over to his corner. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our fatal four-way. It is main event time. The winner of this matchup, of course, is walking out right there with the SWF Television Championship. And the ref holds it up. Beautiful looking title. I really like the look of that. Seb Abbott, ugh. James Gaines, Malcolm Black, and ends. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is underway, and we will be leaving here tonight with a new SWF, the first ever internet, or excuse me, SWF Uprising Television Champion. Nice neck breaker there from ends, and good Lord, Abbott sends Malcolm Black over the top rope. Big kick to the back of the head. Gaines and ends won their matches tonight. Malcolm Black did not, and Seb Abbott was sitting around the back and catering, eating and drinking everything he could get his hands on. Ends, nice, oh, big kick, Malcolm Black and Seb Abbott, Abbott with a DDT. Ends gets tossed to the outside. Gaines now wants to join in on the action. 
And a Hurricane Rana sends Abbott into the steel steps. My goodness. Oof. Oh, my gosh. Now, this is not an elimination matchup. These guys are going to go at it. Only one can walk out victorious, and it could be anybody. Being that it is not elimination, it doesn't matter if you've had a match earlier tonight or not. These guys are going to give it their all. Back in the ring is Abbott, and look at that. Gains with a gut buster to ends. Follows it up with a kick right to the side of the head, and he says, I told you once, I told you a thousand times. All well, going back, and a knee right to the face. Abbott going it. Malcolm Black and a neck breaker there. Wow. And Abbott not going to let Gaines do his uh, middle rope move. Up to one knee. Black with a shot to ends. These guys are kind of attacking ends at the moment. And they're going to double team ends. Double DDT. Black comes back in the match and immediately goes after Abbott. Hits him with that Hurricane Rana. He's landing Hurricane Ranas like Siler Jordan's landing cutters. Pin and no. Abbott just shoves Gaines off of ends. And now they've switched partners here. Out goes Abbott. No. Ends went for a kick, but Malcolm Black turns it into a dragon whip. Nice move there. Face buster from Gaines. There's a lot going on in this matchup. Taken down by Abbott on the outside. Ends now as Malcolm Black up to his feet. Reversal from Black. DDT. And look at this. Nope, reversal. Gaines is able to reverse. And a big, big clothesline from Malcolm Black. Abbott's tossed back into the ring just as Black looks to be getting the upper hand on ends. A kick to the stomach. Sunset flip power bomb as Abbott hits gets hit with a jawbreaker and instead of going for the pin oh my gosh and look at this what a what a move there from Malcolm Black he hits the ref with a hurricane rana James Gaines goes to land the big knee right across the face of Seb Abbott but Malcolm Black interrupts it and a suplex reversal there from ends nice move shot to the face by ends now look at this He's going to, oh, he's got him locked up. He's got him locked up in the figure four. If Malcolm Black taps out, ends as your new television champion. And it looks like Black's going to reverse it and able to get out of it. My gosh. Abbott sends Gaines over the top rope and quickly follows him. I'm not sure I would be doing that. Because you're uh, if you're on the outside, you can't prevent what's going on on the inside. And that's where this match is going to end. Malcolm Black with a pin on ends. No, just a two count. Into the turnbuckle goes Abbott. Jeez. Drop, a, or excuse me, an elbow drop. Right to the back of the head of ends. Gaines is fired up, folks. Seb Abbott face first where he spends most of his time anyway. Drunken stupor. Making his way, no, in a reversal. He has got Gaines up. Look at this. Hooking him up and face first. Goes Gaines. My gosh, and a nice neck breaker there from Inns. Gaines dodges the kick. Look at this. Gaines has him up, whips him around into a power bomb, and ends with a shot to Gaines. Oh boy. Starting to get interesting here. Backbreaker and a side rush and leg sweep from Gaines. Lex in the sitting position. Abbott slowly rising to his feet. Off the ring and a knee and a kick right to the side of the head. Goes for the pin. Black is in and he breaks the pin up. Oh my gosh. How close was that? And a chop. And it looks like over the top goes Gaines. Malcolm Black is going to follow him out, and out goes Abbott. All of these guys going to the outside makes no sense to me. Oof. He is going to slam Malcolm Black hard against the apron. 
some, you gotta win this matchup in the ring, and it looks like right now, Enns is the only one. Back in goes Abbott, and it looks like Gaines is gonna chase after him, followed by Enns, followed by Malcolm Black. Into the corner goes Gaines. Oh, nice reversal, and a reversal from Enns, and geez, Black went for a clothesline and a page turner from Enns, and, he, and Gaines is gonna roll out. What a bunch of craziness is going on right now. Abbott going for the pin, but before the ref can get down, Enns stops that. Oh, reversal from Abbott. And Dr. Teeth right there to Abbott. He's going down for the pin. And a two count from Abbott able to kick out there. Double X handle to the thigh of Abbott. Gaines slowly making his way back up to his feet and gets back in the ring. He doesn't go after ends right away, or at all it looks like. Abbott going at it with ends. All four men back in the ring and a big knee sends Abbott down to the mat. And oh, rake of the eyes. Big clothesline from Abbott. And he's going to go for the pin Malcolm Black slides out, one, oh my gosh, two. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, Malcolm Black not aware of his surroundings and what was happening. And Seb Abbott with the clothesline from hell gets, ends, and gets the victory. My goodness. What an insane chain of events here. Look at this, I mean, just... Insanity blasting ends right there with the clothesline. And ladies and gentlemen, this Australian nightmare of a man. Ref, you might wanna you might wanna get out of that. Get out. Get out. That is how we're gonna end episode two of Uprising. Ladies and gentlemen, your first ever Uprising television champion. It is Seb Abbott in a fantastic Fatal 4-Way matchup. Thank you for watching. Come back soon with more SWF.